So in the previous two videos, we looked at examples of a pendulum, a pendulum swinging. Um, we looked at two different ways of creating that uh, swinging pendulum. Uh, I've gone back to my original pendulum, the one that is created from polygon primitives, because I want to show you one more thing, one more thing uh, related to the follow-through overlapping action that we've been looking at. Uh, this time I'm going to animate this uh, pendulum, but not as a pendulum, more as, let's say, I don't know, something that's sticking upright like this, a pole, a flexible pole of some sort, let's say. Uh, and let's see what we can do with that. So I'm going to grab these. Uh, I'm not doing anything with the base this time. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and just grab uh, the links and the weight here on this. Instead of something hanging, this is something a little more rigid, uh, yet still flexible. Okay, uh, I'm going to bend it, uh, let's say, in this axis here, maybe about, oh, let's say this much. I'll key it. Uh, and I'm going to go to, uh, we'll go to frame 12, so it'll take about half a second for it to swing back in this direction, perhaps there. And I'm going to copy my first key uh, and and paste it on frame 24. Actually, the easiest way to do that is not to copy paste, but to simply scrub to the timeline, use your middle mouse button and then drag. And you can see I can drag using my middle mouse button and nothing happens in the viewport. If I just drag using my left mouse button, we see the animation. If I drag using my middle mouse button, I can move it to a different frame and then key it. That's a very easy way of copying the keyframes from a different part on your timeline to another part on your timeline. So let's see what we have here now. This is the animation I have. It's just a simple back and forth animation. Now for this particular example, I think I want this to just continue going on over and over and over again. So we'll take a look at a way that we can do that in our graph editor come over to my graph editor. And what I'm going to do is select my animation curves and I'm going to go to curves, pre-infinity, cycle, and curves, post-infinity, cycle. And what that's going to do is make this animation continually cycle. It'll play the animation over and over and over again. Now we should be able to see that actually in our graph editor and currently it's not showing up. Uh, let's see if we can resolve that. I'm going to go to view infinity and now you can see even though we haven't set keyframes uh, before this current frame of zero nor after this last uh, keyframe at frame 24, but you can see that the animation just continues playing on and on and on. And in fact, when we play it here, you see that's exactly what's happening. So now that I have that animated, let's see what else we can do with this. Something very interesting that we can do with this. Uh, right now, everything, all of, uh, all of my objects here are keyed on exactly the same frame. So I'm going to go to my dope sheet, although I could do this in the graph editor as well, but here the dope sheet is probably the easiest place to do this. I'm going to offset each one of these links in here. I'm going to offset each one of them. So starting with link one, we'll leave that where it is. I'll take everything from link two and below, and I'm going to move those keys over two frames. I'll select uh, these now, link three, four in the way, and I'll move them over to, and so on, so that each consecutive uh, part of the chain here gets offset by two frames. And now, if we play this, we'll get a little bit different result, something that'll look kind of interesting. Uh, we get this more kind of flexible looking um, object here.
Again, this is an example of follow through overlapping action where not everything happens at once. Uh, the first link rotates and then the next link follows a few frames after and so on and that gives us this more kind of flexible feel to it. Let's go ahead and offset it a little bit more. We'll offset it a little bit more to make the effect a little more pronounced and we'll probably also play around a little bit with the value of it. So I'm going to move each one of these uh, over yet one more frame to exaggerate this follow through overlapping action a little bit more, make it more pronounced. Uh, and I think I'm going to change the value of it as well. And we can do that in the graph editor. So I'll go to my Windows Animation Editor graph editor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these keys here and I'm going to scale them. I'm going to use my scale tool this very same tool here. I can select it here, or I can use the hotkey. Uh, and then I'm going to hold down shift, middle mouse button, and I'm going to scale it in value, not time. Remember that you could scale it as both value or time. Uh, we'll scale it maybe something like this, and we'll take a look at it. And something accidental happened here. I know what happened, but here we'll take a look at it. It's kind of interesting. Um, what I've just done here that I didn't intend on doing is uh, because the scale also had keys on it, even though I didn't animate them, uh, they had keys on it and they were keyed at one. Uh, we're getting this interesting result where each consecutive uh, part of the chain is getting scaled bigger. Uh, I'm going to cut that, although although I think it actually looks kind of cool, kind of looks interesting. Um, or we could either cut this animation here, we don't really need it, or we could just set it back. I'll go to my graph editor, and what I can do is just select my scale keys here. If I need to keep that animation, We could simply uh, set these back to one. And now zoom in our animation and play it. You can see this gives it a very flexible feel to it, very flexible. Maybe I'll try uh, scaling it even more. So remember that uh, we're looking at this channel here, the Rotate Z, so if I want to be careful not to accidentally uh, scale some of the keys that I didn't intend on scaling like I did before, uh, I'll simply select them, grab my keys here, uh, maybe so that we can see what's happening. I'll just take my graph editor and move it out a little like this, and we'll try scaling it even more. Uh, let's see, go to one of the extremes here, let's say, like that, and maybe we want it to come all the way down like this. So let's try that out, and we'll go ahead and play it, and here's what we have. Again, this is a really good example of follow-through overlapping action. Let's take a look at how we can have a little bit more fun with this animation here. I'm going to duplicate this. Now, if I just do a simple duplicate, it will not bring over its animation. But if I select the object here, the parent, along with, I don't have to select the children, I just need to select the parent here. Go to Edit, Duplicate Special, open up its tool settings, and we'll check this here, this duplicate, duplicate input graph, and we'll apply. Now I'll move it over and we'll have two objects animated. Let's go ahead and 
expand on that object, select the, um, the components of it or the, uh, the parts, and we'll open up our dope sheet and we will further uh, shift over its keys three frames and then play. I'll go ahead and do this one more time. Selecting the object, edit. This time I don't need to go into the tool settings. We already set them. So I'll just apply it. Move it over a little. And we'll offset its keys as well. And we'll play. So as you can see, offsetting keys can create uh, some interesting results. Interesting and appealing results.